All right, for our next stitch, I'm going to be showing you how to do the French seam. The French seam comes up more often than um, some of the other examples we've done, but it is a very specific context. And if you are being asked to do a French seam, someone will tell you. Um, I've recently used it to make a really nice finished seam on a lace garment where you're going to see the inside of the seam even through the outside of the, of the garment because it's made of lace, so it's see-through. So something different about this stitch, which is a little hard to demonstrate on muslin, but as opposed to starting with, with our right sides together, I'm assigning these two to be my right sides, this side and this side. As opposed to having these together, like a classic stitch, any of the stitches we've done before this, we're going to start with our wrong sides together. Like I said, this can be kind of confusing with muslin since they have the right side and the wrong side, there is no right side. But right now, envision that these are our wrong sides together. I'm going to pin it in place. Um, just like I'm doing a regular straight running stitch in the machine, pin it in, and then I'm going to stitch my seam uh, at a two and a half inch or two and a half stitch length, um, but I'm going to stitch it at a quarter inch. I want it to be really, really skinny. So I'm just lining the edge of my fabric up with the edge of my presser foot here, and I'm going to stitch. I'm going to back stitch. Oh, and this happens sometimes. My machine's tail was not quite long enough, so I'm just going to stick it back in there. There we go. And begin again, because the first time I was sewing with air. Not super useful. So I've got my narrow seam here. I'm gonna clip that off. And now I'm going to take it, because right now in our imaginary example, we've got our beautiful right sides of our fabric and then a really ugly little seam poking through, which is not what we want. So I'm going to flip it over. I'm sandwiching the seams inside like a casing. So now this, this is the wrong side of our fabric. But before sewing this one, I am going to take it over the iron and give it a quick press. All right, so we're going to press our French seam. And to do that, we're going to do exactly what we did in the last general pressing video. I'm going to press it once, just flat. Hold it open. And this one is a little trickier than our last stitch because the seam allowance is a lot narrower, but we are just pressing it open now. Let's use some steam on that one, flip it over, press it on this side, which if you'll remember is our wrong side for this one actually, even though it looks like right now it's our right side. So now this is where we get real, real French with it. We're going to fold it in half with our wrong side to the outside and we're gonna press it flat like this. Um, this is making a really nice crisp edge for us to sew on which will make our finished product, product much better. So you want it pressed like this with your seam on the edge. And then we're gonna go back over to our sewing machine. All right, so we're back at our sewing station with our French seam pressed piece of fabric. Before I get stitching, I am going to feel and look at my fabric chunk and pin just outside of where I can see my one quarter inch seam allowance lies because we're going to stitch a line over on this part from the outside and we don't want our seam allowance bits from the inside poking through because that, that is not conduct or conducive to what we're trying to do. Um, you also can trim down the seam allowance inside to make it much thinner, which is what I would do generally in a real life context. But for this sample, this is good enough. So now I'm going to stitch another regular line. Uh, I've got my my seam sandwich, as I like to call it, all ready to go. I'm gonna make sure my, oh, my needle has come unthreaded. Uh, that's something to check for. You'll know if you're if you're sewing with air, you'll be able to realize pretty quickly, uh, and fix it by rethreading the needle. But 
you don't want to get too far because that's a very sad feeling when you get to the end and you realize your bobbins run out or your thread slipped and you've got nothing, nothing to show for all your labors, which is not what we want. We want nothing but success for you in this class. So I'm placing my presser foot right just at the edge of where the fold line would be and then slightly over because I don't want to have the fold poking through. And I'm going to stitch. And when I reach the end, I'm going to clip the threads. And no. And this is a French seam. So from this side, it looks like this. This is the wrong side. And from the right side, ta-da, we've got a perfectly crisp looking straight seam. Um, so the point of this is, like I said, on garments where you're going to be able to see the inside or you want a really nice finished edge on the inside, you would French seam it. So like I said, right side, wrong side, but even the wrong side, it's kind of gorgeous. That's all there is to French seams.